Hi, it's Dr. Z. In this video, I will review emotion. By the end of this video, you'll be able to explain the physiological, cognitive, behavioral, and sociocultural factors involved in emotions. You will also be able to describe four theories of emotion. Please feel free to pause the video at any time to take notes. Have you ever gotten so angry that your face got hot? Or you were shaking with rage? My friend, you experienced the physiological component of the emotion of anger. Emotions are a subjective state of being that we commonly refer to as feelings. Let's do a guided visualization to illustrate the power of emotions. First, on a scale of zero, meaning not at all, to 10, meaning extremely, how happy are you right now? Please write down your number value. Now, I would like for you to relax and close your eyes. I want you to think about the happiest moment in your life. I want you to picture the location of this happiest moment. What do you smell? What do you hear? How are you reacting during this happiest moment? I want you to picture the people who are with you during this happiest moment. What are they wearing? What are you wearing? What were you thinking during this happiest moment? I want you to sit with this moment. When you are ready, please open your eyes. Now, on a scale of zero, meaning not at all, to 10, meaning extremely, how happy are you right now after this guided visualization? Please write down your number value. Let's compare your original happiness score and the current happiness score. Is there a difference? Can you explain why there might be a difference in the pre and post happiness scores? Some students will report a higher happiness score at the end of the guided visualization. Other students will report a lower happiness score because while they did visualize the happiest moment, this moment may also bring sadness if the people imagined during the visualization are no longer here. The purpose of this exercise was to prepare you for the physiological, cognitive, behavioral, and sociocultural factors involved in emotions. We will use the characters from the Disney Pixar film Inside Out to illustrate emotions. The concept of emotion has three components. First is phys physiological arousal or physical symptoms. When angry, you may experience tense mus muscles, clenched fists, flushed cheeks, and perhaps your heart racing. Second is cognitive appraisal or the thoughts we experience during the emotion. Has someone tried to calm you down, but you couldn't hear them because you were so angry? Perhaps you had thoughts in your mind about how you want to deal with this person who's making you angry. Third is the behavioral expression, or the outward demonstration of the emotion. When angry, you may curse or yell at someone, hit a wall, or cry in frustration. Let's explore these three comp components in more detail. Physiological factors involve the physical symptoms or physical responses that arise while experiencing an emotion. Imagine driving on the highway when suddenly someone cuts you off. What do you do? Do you actually take the time to think about being cut off and then say, oh, I'm being cut off, I probably should brake, and then you brake? No, 
you break or swerve immediately, then your heart starts racing. This scenario is, ex is an example of the fight or flight response, or when the sympathetic nervous system activates. Emotions can trigger a survival response and our body reacts accordingly. We can measure this physical arousal or the state of stimulation. When you're scared or nervous, your body may start to sweat. Formerly referred to as the galvanic skin response, the skin can briefly become a better conductor of electricity, which we can measure by the skin conductance level. In essence, this concept of physical arousal is the foundation for the polygraph. The polygraph determines whether someone is lying using physiological measures like heart rate, blood pressure, breathing, your perspiration, and your skin conductivity. Finally, recall that the amygdala is responsible for emotions in general. In fact, it also plays an important role in fear. Cognitive factors involve the thoughts that arise while experiencing an emotion. There is a long-standing debate whether thoughts come first or the physiological responses come first. As a result of this debate, Schachter and Singer designed a fascinating experiment to test it. They injected participants with epinephrine, which is a psychoactive drug that makes you jittery and increases heart rate. The first group of participants saw someone behave in a happy and fun manner while shooting a crumpled little paper ball into a wastebasket. The second group of participants, however, saw someone behave in an angry manner by stomping out of the room. The researchers then asked both groups to rate their current emotional state. The first group rated themselves as happy, like joy in Inside Out. On the other hand, the second group rated themselves as angry, like anger in Inside Out. So what the heck happened? Schachter and Singer theorized that participants paired their physical symptoms of being jittery, right, with a cognitive label of either happy or angry that is the thoughts, which then resulted in the stated emotion of happy or angry. This experiment provided evidence that misinterpreted physiological arousal intensifies emotional experiences. In other words, if we mistake the physical symptoms of jitteriness and heart racing as something is wrong, then we will feel that mistaken emotion of fear or anxiety even more intensely. For students with anxiety, I encourage you to slow down before automatically interpreting any physical symptoms of heart racing as being nervous, when in fact you may be excited about the situation at hand. Behavioral factors involve the outward demonstration of the emotion. This behavioral expression can be both verbal and nonverbal. When sad, you may share out loud your feelings of loneliness and sadness with others if you're venting. You can explain to others how you're feeling during these venting sessions. Alternatively, you may choose to avoid people when you're depressed. Avoidance is still a behavioral yet nonverbal expression of an emotion. Crossing your arms and frowning are additional nonverbal examples of showing the emotion of frustration or annoyance. The facial feedback hypothesis is this cool idea that facial expression can influence emotions as well as reflect them. The saying, fake it till you make it, has a similar premise in that muscle movements for certain facial expressions produce the corresponding emotion. Want to try it for yourself? Let's do the pencil demo. Place a 
pencil horizontally in your mouth and bite down on it to hold it with your teeth. I want you to look in the mirror or take a selfie so you can see your face. This specific position forces your mouth muscles into a smile. Research by Paul Ekman and colleagues showed that participants who held this position for 10 seconds had physiological reactions, such as heart rate and body temperature, that mimicked the emotion. In other words, my friends, smiling makes you feel happy, as Joy is trying to make sadness do in this photo from Inside Out. In an increasingly global society, we must account for social and cultural factors that influence emotion. Paul Ekman photographed people expressing a variety of emotions, as seen here in this photo. He then showed these same photographs to people from different countries, including the four tribe and isolated, isolated Stone Age culture in New Guinea in 1971. He described most people could match the facial expression with the correct emotion. As a result, Ekman and his colleagues identified six basic emotions shown in this photo. Anger, fear, disgust, surprise, happiness, and sadness. If these basic emotions sound familiar, they are. The Disney Pixar film Inside Out used five of them as their main characters. The emotion of surprise was not used. These basic emotions tend to be unlearned and universal. Ek Ekman's work continues to be replicated with some minor changes, and they tend to be reflected across cultures. Emotional expression is often mediated by cultural and societal rules. The concept of display rules are sociocultural standards that determine when, where, and how emotions should be expressed. For example, what emotions are we supposed to show at a funeral? Well, that answer depends on your culture. In New Orleans, Louisiana, a jazz funeral begins at a church or a funeral home, and the mourners have a procession to the cemetery joined by a brass band, music, and dancing. Culturally, the jazz funeral is more of a celebration of life than full of grief and sorrow. When it comes to experiencing emotions, what comes first? Is it the physical symptoms like your heart racing? Or is it the cognitive factors like your thoughts? Or maybe even the behavioral factors of running away? Let's use the scenario of a bull running toward you to explain the four theories of emotion. The first theory is the James Lang theory. This theory hypothesizes that emotions happen so quickly that physiological arousal or the physical symptoms happen first and then immediately the emotion follows. There is no thinking involved in this theory. This theory may explain how you swerve to avoid a car accident without thinking about it first due to the sympathetic nervous system response or the fight or flight response. The second theory is the Cannon Bard theory. This theory also hypothesizes that emotions happen so quickly. But in this case, physiological arousal or physical symptoms happen at the same time as the emotion. One does not cause the other. This theory may explain how the facial feedback hypothesis allows you to feel the emotion at the same time that you're mimicking the muscle movements of that same emotion. The third theory is the Schachter-Singer theory. 
the previous two theories do not address cognitive factors. Here, Schachter Singer's experiment served as the foundation for their theory of emotion. Recall that in their experiment, participants were drugged with epinephrine and then used the cognitive label of happy or angry to explain their current emotional state. In this case, the physiological arousal or the physical symptoms were paired with a cognitive explanation of what was going on. Physiological arousal plus the cognitive explanation equals the emotion, or one plus two equals fear. This theory may explain how you start feeling scared when you hear creepy music in a movie because you're trying to find explanations in your head for why the music sounds the way it is. The fourth theory is the Lazarus theory. Lazarus hypothesized that thoughts are extremely powerful and happen before anything else. In other words, thinking happens first, then you experience the emotion of fear, and then the body catches up by physically reacting with the heart racing and sweating. This theory may explain any students who had different pre and post happiness scores in the guided visualization exercise at the start of the video. Thinking about the happiest moment in your life triggered the emotion of happiness or perhaps sadness, and then your body reacted with a smile or teary eyes. We mentioned earlier that some emotional reactions, like swerving to miss a car accident, occur too rapidly to pass through cognitive appraisal first. And that's why there are four theories to explain our emotions. In summary, emotions are a subjective state of being that we commonly refer to as feelings. There are physiological, cognitive, behavioral, and sociocultural factors involved in emotions. Regardless of which theory of emotion best explains our feelings in the moment, we must recognize the power of emotions in our everyday lives.